So we should be praying whether we're, um, whether we are in the car or whether we are at home or whether we are at work. And you say, well, how am I going to do that? You can pray in the spirit. You can pray in your mind. You can pray. Uh, come on over. It's okay. You can just pray. Um, you can pray without disturbing anyone. Because what you're doing is you're in an, an unshakable kingdom. You're in an unshakable kingdom. Listen to me. This is very, very important. When all of this is hitting and it hits you, how does it hit you? It hits you in your mind. This is where it hits you. Most of the time, you're, oh, la, 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 la. We're having a good day. We're having tea. We're having. All of a sudden, you're like, these thoughts just come to you. Oh, they don't like you. Do you know blah, blah, blah? Do you know what they said about you? Blah, blah. Like, wait, where did that come from? Like, I, I wasn't thinking about that. And so this is the way it is. We are in a battle, and I cannot emphasize it to you enough. We're in a battle, and the word of God says we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but principalities and powers in high places. So those principalities are over different areas. Like we're in a different area, so there's different principalities over San Martin. There is Leviathan that is over this area. And so communication becomes very difficult because of Leviathan. So I can tell Anne something, and or I can text her something, and then she's like, oh, she thought I said or meant something else. And it's like, no, that's not what I meant. Or people will get offended because communication gets twisted by the enemy and then whatever is in you gets stirred up so that's why we continually are to live in forgiveness we are to live by the spirit of god not by our emotions so as we pray we i, I want to ask Anne to pray with me because there are so many needs right now our children need prayer. They're being bombarded. Uh, like, do they go to school? Do they not go to school? Do they do what they say or do they not do what they say? You know what they say? That you have to do this and you have to do that. Our children are being bombarded. Our older people are being bombarded. Everyone is being bombarded. It's not just you. But God is the answer. God is the light to the nation. And that's how we are to operate. And the word of God says, casting down every vain imagination that exalts itself above the knowledge of God. So when your imagination starts to work, and you're like, oh, they're mad at me. They're blah, blah, blah. And oh, well, they might be. But you know what? You don't have to go there. Don't go there. You will start to go there, and then you have to say, no, I'm not going to think about that. So as we pray... Um, if uh, Jeremy will help me uh, here, we just want to pray a shalom song, shalom, shalom, Jerusalem. Because Hashem says, first we pray for the peace of Jerusalem. And then we pray for everything else that is happening in the world. That's just the order of Hashem. Because what? Torah comes from Zion. So I'm just going to say a prayer for Israel because Israel's going through a lot right now. Uh, they're estimating uh, one of the um, officials has estimated that by this time uh, in September that there will be over 5,000 at least in hospital. They are projecting because uh, the situation is increasing more and more and more. Okay. Can you make sure that the mic is up? Oh, there we go. Hello. Oh, thank you. Thanks. Um, we need to remember that the projections were not true for um, the United States a year ago. They projected that people would be out of hospital beds, hospitals would be out of hospital beds, and um, the direct accounts from nurses were that they were never out of hospital beds. Mm -hmm. But the problem is, is that a lot of people get gripped by the spirit of fear yes. and they're scared to even go into hospitals because there's so many rules about you can't have visitors um, or maybe they get fear fearful that the nurses and doctors won't treat the illness correctly Which and that they'll be stuck and that a lot of people have gotten so ill that they've 
they've died or they've been in in critical care with the intubated for a long long time um so we should pray against fear but um i I don't ever look at estimations like that anymore i've learned my lesson i just worry i just don't want the people to get stuck in fear because exactly so let's pray against that because i just read this report yesterday and this is what they're estimating because many many people are becoming ill right now like by the thousands uh every day or by the week well that's why they need good care they need good home care so that they won't end up in the hospital (laughs) it's a 99 percent recovery rate for most people who are young so um, let's take good care of yourself you have god then you're you're gonna get through it so abba father we pray right now we pray right now lord especially for zion we pray right now lord especially for israel right now lord And Father, you know all things, Lord, and your word says, your word says that you work all things out for good. And Lord, whatever the enemy would uh, disseminate in communication, whatever he would say, Lord, to strike fear uh, to people and to families, Lord. Father, would you just turn it around, Lord, and would you just use it for the good and not for the evil? For Lord, we know, we know your word says, Lord, that the enemy comes only to steal, to kill, and to destroy. But you came you came that we would have life and that we'd have it more abundantly and lord i i pray for life i pray for strength i pray for healing i pray for restoration i pray for all the good things that you want to do according to your torah according to your word lord you desire to give good gifts to your children I pray according to your word, Lord, that we're blessed going in, that we're blessed going out. I pray according to your will, Lord, O oh God, that we are all abundantly blessed as we stay under the shadow of the Almighty. We are kept, we are kept safe. And Lord, from Zion, from Israel, from Jerusalem, as we pray for the peace of Jerusalem, Lord, we pray for all of Israel. We pray, Lord, for the north, Lord. We pray, Lord, for that Lebanon a border, Lord, that has been uh, very much trouble in the last uh, few weeks, Lord. We pray for the South, Lord, O oh God, that needs your safety, Lord. And we pray for the people, Lord, O oh God, that people will not go all into hospitals, Lord, that you will have mercy, that you will have grace, that that will not happen, Lord. Thank you for the grace and mercy. And we do bind fear, Lord, O oh God, uh, from there to all over the world, Lord, uh, the spirit of fear, Lord, that is predominant. But, Lord, let your glory be predominant. Let your healing be predominant. Let your strength be predominant. Let your hope be predominant today. We declare it in Yeshua's name. We declare it now. Amen. And um, Yes, I wanted to also uh, remember Haiti. Uh, right now they just had that earthquake. Uh, it just happened like a couple of hours ago maybe not even two hours it it just happened and the last report uh this may be totally different right now but the last report that i read there were at least 227 people that had perished uh and this earthquake there's hundreds injured and there's hundreds or however many missing people right now so we pray right now the mercy and the grace of god over haiti We pray that Haiti will turn to the God of Israel. He is the only God. Lord, in your mercy and in your grace, Lord, we know the history of Haiti. Lord, we know, Lord, that that island, Lord, was given away to the enemy many years ago, Lord, uh, in in a vow that they made, Lord. Father, and Lord, in your mercy and your grace, Lord, many have gone there, Lord, to try to help, to try to speak the uh, Torah to the people. But, Lord, right now, Lord, they're in dire need. We pray for the souls of the people. We pray for uh, help, Lord, to them. Lord, with the Red Cross, whoever would extend a hand, oh, Lord, to help them. And, Lord, we just thank you, Lord, for sending angels, especially to the children, Lord, that may be hurt. Uh, They may be very afraid, Lord. And we just pray for them, Lord, right now. And we lift them up. Yes. yes. So, um, I, Father God, in Yeshua's name, I just pray that you would send um, your ministering angels to just guide all of the um, 
the families that may have been separated during this earthquake, Lord, I just pray that you would just have mercy on these people, whether they're believers or not. Help them to um, even um, believing organizations, Lord, um, like the one that Franklin Graham helps to head. Lord, I just pray that a lot of those would be able to come to the aid in the next week or so of these people, and that in the meantime that you would just put a covering of protection over um, people who you have your hand on, and um, especially the most vulnerable, the, the children, that they would be safely reunited with some family member, Lord, that they wouldn't be filtered into some other um, um, bad place or um, front for any, um, any bad organization. Lord, that's happened in the past in Haiti. So, Lord, please, just we just pray protection for the elderly, protection for the most vulnerable, Lord, protection for, like you say, the widows and the orphans, Lord, the ones that are the most vulnerable and weak, that you would um, have your hand on them, Lord, and just guide them to safety, help them to get what they need, um, clean water and, and food, Lord, in Yeshua's name. Yes, amen. And there was something else that you wanted to pray for uh, that you had mentioned. Yes, could you could you pray for those families? There's a lot of interpreters and families that uh, have been waiting for visas uh, also that need to get out of Afghanistan. Uh, they're in great danger. Uh, and there's other people because as this situation has shifted and changed and our troops are leaving Afghanistan, uh, the Taliban. So let's pray, especially for the children and the women and the families that are being left without protection. Did you pray, Anne? So, Father God, I know that you, your Holy Spirit just watches over the entire earth, Lord God, and that we know that you're a faithful God, Lord, and that sin has tried to overtake so many so many parts of the world, Lord, but we pray for your mercy. We just pray, um, we pay, pray no backlash, but we just pray mercy and that your your goodness and that your spirit and that your ministering angels would go to, to thousands of people there that are trying to find a safe place this week, that are trying to walk out of danger, Lord, that, are, that, that have to leave their villages, that have to leave the places that maybe they've only been in for a, a few years, that they tried to find a safe haven from other places, Lord, and now now there's no one to protect them and so i pray for your mercy i pray for you you know we're so blessed in the united states i thank you for how blessed that we've been during our my lifetime lord lord i'm always grateful for all the freedoms that we've had in my lifetime and i just pray that you would you would um, watch over and protect a lot of these little children and and young families and and people just trying to get a better life lord god and and in their own country trying to walk to, to just a place that would be, um, just meet their most basic needs, Lord. And Lord, I pray that you would, um, would you just move on the, on the heart, on the mind of uh, leadership that is in control, even leadership from our country, that as they leave, that they could help as many people as they could, um, to, to get them whatever they need and, yes. and and if you could just open up a door by some miracle for yes. neighboring countries or um, um, even some of the good people in Israel that they just believe in tikkun, uh, they believe in what is it they believe in helping the world and healing the world Lord yes. so I just pray that you would just even secretly open the doors to um, to humanitarian aid in those areas or yes. That, that the suffering and, and and that there would be just, that you would just protect, that there would be less bloodshed, that you would have mercy in Yeshua's name. Amen. Thank you, Anne, for praying. And listen, you guys, it's almost Rosh Hashanah, and there's always a shift that happens. Every time that the feasts come and they are approaching us, there's a major shift that happens in the earth and we are approaching Rosh Hashanah. Rosh Hashanah began September 6th, and we're gonna be commemorating it here like pre-Rosh uh, Hashanah. Uh, we will have some apples and some honey to share with you to wish you a good new year, a sweet new year. And uh, so we will be celebrating here 
on, I believe it is the 4th, uh, September 4th at 3 o'clock. We will be here for uh, Rosh Hashanah, like a prophetic Rosh Hashanah Shabbat. And then, of course, after that will come Yom Kippur and it will come um, Sukkot. So um, you will get some more information if you haven't gotten it or we'll post it. But for now, we are thankful for you joining us. Thank you for praying with us. Prayer is so important. It's like, you know, we can worry, but that doesn't help. So what do we have? We have the power of God, the dunamis power of God to pray. And so that's where we take the time. You say, well, why are you taking so much time to pray? Because that's what we're supposed to do. Yes, 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 of course. I, I just wanted to say that I'm so thankful for any of you watching and for our friends that are here. I'm so thankful that my mother taught me, she's my mother, that my mother taught me since I was a little girl to pray and what prayer was and how much Yeshua loves us. And, and it's always there even in the middle of the night when we're afraid. When I was a little girl, she would teach me that he was there to protect me and to watch over me and to listen um, and to help me with whatever problems I had. And sometimes as adults, we forget that and we start striving and we start trying to figure out our own solutions to our problems and we're working so hard to, f sometimes we work so hard trying to figure out the solution to the problem and um, we get really off track um, or we, we, we run the risk of going in a different direction from God than where God wants us to be. Mm -hmm. And um, uh, I just had a, a good couple of weeks of, of actually hearing Holy Spirit's voice and going in the right direction for me and my family and my daughter. And it's such a good relieving feeling. So I just wanted to make the point that when the enemy is trying to bring fear that um, God always has a plan for you if you pray, yes, but don't get pray. into like some kind of weird, like God, give me a red Ferrari. You know, it's not about <laughs> God, give me what I want. That's not anywhere in here. Yes. Nowhere in here is God, give me just what I want. It's always pray God's will. Yes. It's you can just read through the Proverbs. You'll see it a million times, you know. So, um, like, like he wants our will to be joined with his will, and he Absolutely. wants us praying his will. And and um, there are lots of scriptures that say, when when our heart is is w in his heart, and when we're close to him, then then he does lavish his goodness yes, on us and his blessing us on us. Of our heart. And his blessing on us. But when our heart is in his heart not yes. when our heart is out there in the world or out there striving, striving, trying to, you know, I want to be, you know, mm -hmm. trying to prove yourself to the world. Nobody needs to prove themselves to right. the world, you know. God can put a desire in your heart. And just like my daughter loves to dance, that desire was in her heart from him. But she could have said, I want to go way over this direction with it. Mm -hmm. And it could, you know. Yes. And we need to be going in his direction. Yes, and... Um, Okay, so we're going to uh, declare the Shema in a minute, but I want to encourage every young person, and if you're watching this and you're like, you know, even if you're watching it later in the week or, you know, you catch this little moment of prayer here that we're having, I want you to pray for young people because as we were singing a while ago, I wanted to tell you and I wanted to tell my granddaughter who is here right now that the Spirit of God was quickening me to encourage young people because God has a very special mission for the young people of this generation. Of course, it's always been to all generations, but for this generation, Hashem is saying, rise up, rise up and be the army of God, rise up and do your dancing, rise up and do your creative art, rise up and do your music rise up and be the army of God because that's the army that's going to arise there are going to be a few Caleb's and a few Joshua's and I hope we're them you know my husband and I because we're older I pray that we are Joshua's and Caleb's because we're older and if you'll remember uh, Tishbav and the ten spies you know that were sent out only two 
Only two people believed. The rest were scared and said, no, we can't do it. We can't take the land. We, what, what do you mean take the land? We can't do it. Like with what? Like we have our little army here that doesn't even know how to fight. But Hashem says you can because I'm with you, not because of you, not because of our strength. We don't have very much strength. I just had surgery. I'm like, I'm here. <laughs> I'm like, I should be resting. But God is the one that gives strength. God is the one that will do the battle for us if we partner with him and partner with his heart. Amen. Thank you for joining us in uh, our Torah talk prayer at the bridge and we'll have more of these and then we'll kind of try to clip them out so people will be encouraged and for now we just want to thank and appreciate you thank you for giving also thank